I don't think it's any secret at this point that I love creating credit card roadmaps and strategizing the heck out of my credit card setup. The fun part about it is that it's just so personal and there are so many different routes you can take in the credit card game to maximize the value that you get from your specific credit cards. It's been about six months or so since I made my last credit card roadmap video. And in that time, I've added multiple credit cards to my setup that came from those exact roadmaps, that being the Marriott Boundless credit card, the Chase Inc. Unlimited, and the Built MasterCard. However, now it's time to take a look at the new year and see how I can get the most value out out of my credit card additions as possible. In this video, I'm not only going to be showing you exactly what cards I plan on applying for next, but also discussing the order of those credit cards and why that is so important. And here's my big disclaimer for the video. Just because I'm going to be speaking of each one of these credit cards so highly does not mean that you should be considering adding these cards to your setup too, necessarily. And you just need to be sure to do your own research on each of the cards that you add to your credit card roadmap and not just take the word of somebody online. Every credit card setup is going to be drastically different and require you to look at the nitty gritty of each of these cards and see how they interchangeably work with each other. And if that sounds like too much work and you would want some personalized help with that, I do offer paid calls to do exactly that. And while that service is not for everybody, I know that it's been extremely helpful to those that have gone through it. So feel free to either check the link down below or DM me on Instagram to learn more about that if you're interested. Now, for those of y'all that have been with the channel for a while, you'll know that I have a dedicated spreadsheet that helps me to basically pick exactly what card I should be applying for next. And I always leave that in the description of any of these road mapping videos completely for free. So what we're going to do here today is go through the spreadsheet of mine and I'll go ahead and break down each one of the sections in this spreadsheet. That way you can kind of tell how it informs my general credit card strategy, but we're only going to spend a majority of the time on just one of these sections. The rest of them, I just want to give you a brief overview of. Okay. So at the very top of the spreadsheet, the most important rule that I always track is going to be my Chase 524 status. The Chase 524 rule basically states that if you've been approved for five or more personal credit cards with any lender in the past 24 months, Chase will automatically deny you for your next credit card application with them. And being that I'm somebody that does like to add more chase cards to my setup because of their flexibility of getting multiple welcome bonuses on their cards and whatnot. I track my 524 status very heavily, even still to this day when I have like six of their credit cards. So in order to do this in the spreadsheet, I basically just have a section dedicated to all the cards that I have opened. So the card names here on the left, the date that I opened them, and then have some calculations running in the background that basically tell me exactly how long it will be until my cards age past that two year mark. So you'll see here, once they do age past that two year mark, the cells will turn green. And if they are still over two years old, the cells will be red. I do also have some NA cells in here or some non-applicable cells because these are business credit cards and business credit cards generally do not count towards your 524 status. So as you can see, while I do have currently like 12 credit cards open, my 524 status is only 524. When some people might've calculated this as what, 924 with all of these that I have open. Luckily, four of those are business credit cards that didn't add to my 524 status. Hence why I applied for them over other personal cards at the time, because I wanted to manage this effectively. And that's why this spreadsheet has been so powerful for me. The 524 status column here also does automatically calculate. So that is nice. And then I have a next card drop date column here that tells me, you know, just when to expect to be able to apply for more cards as I fall under 524. This column is also calculated to give you the first day of the following month that you drop under 524. Kind of confusing, I know, but let's take an example here. So my city custom cash was opened on April 8th of 2022, but it doesn't drop until May 1st of 2024, technically. And that's just a way for me to be safe with my estimations rather than trying to jump on a card on you know, April 8th of 2024, where they might not have enough time in their systems to actually see that I'm under 524. Underneath that 524 section, though, I just have a section dedicated to the welcome bonuses I've already received. This is just a way for me to, you know, look back in time and see how much money I had to spend to hit these welcome bonuses, my total return on spend for all of those, as well as like the total number of points that I've earned based on welcome bonuses. And this number is approaching a million points from welcome bonuses, which I think is pretty sweet. And this is exactly how I'm tracking that. Now, this cards on radar section is going to be the section that we spend the most time I'm on here, so I'm going to skip it for now, but this is basically exactly how my roadmap is formed. I also have other sections here like the Amex five credit card limit, which is a rule that you know specifically applies to me in my situation since I do want to add more Amex credit cards to my setup. The five credit card limit only applies to cards with Amex that give you a credit limit. So cards like the Amex gold, Amex platinum, those charge cards do not count towards this limit. And it's also a fluctuating limit. You know, some people call it like the Amex four to six credit card limit, which I've done in the past because they seem to give tolerances to people in weird ways where not everybody has the same limit. And as you can see right now, I actually have six cards on this list, which is you know over the limit. But this section just helps me to keep this rule in the top of my mind so that I don't accidentally apply for a card that I don't really want or don't really need, maybe I should say, because that will take up a very valuable slot in this five credit card limit. I just like to be cognizant of that, basically. And then on the bottom here, I have my expected welcome bonus reward totals for the year. And we'll come back to this one in a little bit as well after we get the roadmap done, because this is basically the roadmap 
extended into seeing how much value I'll get from my spending in that year. I also have a few other sections that I'm not going to be showing here in this one because my spreadsheets are all a little bit different, but the one that I have linked in the description will also give you a referral tracker if that's something that you're interested in tracking for yourself. It also has a table for total points earned in the year. And that's something that I use to make my how much money I made in X year videos. And I think that's very helpful just to track in general. That'll track not only your welcome bonuses, but your spending on the card and referrals and all of that just in one place. And then I also have an annual fee tracker on there that helps me to see basically if I'm getting to the point where I'm having way too many annual fees and need to downsize my setup at all. Now, speaking of those really high annual fee cards like the Amex Platinum or Chase Sapphire Reserve, if you have any of those, I want to introduce you to a tool that I use very frequently, that being Kudos. So Kudos is not just another online shopping app. It's actually a free browser extension that Card Rates calls the number one app to multiply your credit card rewards. And that's because Kudos is going to double your rewards on over 15,000 stores like Walmart and Priceline, for example, in just one click. Also, a big tool that I personally use from Kudos a lot is one where they tell you exactly what card to use depending on where you're shopping to get the maximum amount of value for that spend. It's also going to show you your hidden benefits like travel insurances, extended warranty protections, and more just to ensure that you're always using the best card. And then when it is time to check out, you don't have to worry about going to find that credit card in your wallet because Kudos is going to save all that information within their system, which is bank level encrypted. And that's just going to make things very simple for you because it'll autofill all your information. Now, you may be wondering what the cost of Kudos is. And lucky enough for all of us, it's completely free. The way they make their money is by getting a small commission on all of their partnered sites that you shop through using Kudos. So obviously no costs are passed down to you. Kudos is going to work on all of your major desktop browsers as well as your iPhone. So if you want to go ahead and try it out for yourself, be sure to click the link down in my description and enter the promo code Spencer to add Kudos for free today. Oh, and also for a limited time only, if you use that promo code, you're going to earn 2000 points after your first eligible purchase. And that's the equivalent of getting $20 back for making any kind of purchase. Kudos was able to help over 150,000 members earn back over $100 million in rewards last year. So don't wait and go download Kudos for free today. Thank you to Kudos for sponsoring this video, but let's get into my roadmap. Okay, so looking at this cards on my radar section, once again, this is where the bread and butter of my roadmap happens, like I mentioned. All these other rules we discussed do play a role in what cards I put in here, but let's just dive into this line by line so you can see why I've put the cards in here that I have and why I've done them in that particular order. Oh, also let me mention real quick that I've already applied for two credit cards in 2024, that being the Chase Inc. Unlimited and Built MasterCard on the same day. So those cards were on my roadmap, you know, a couple of months ago, but now they're off of it and in the other sections of this spreadsheet because they're added to my setup. But as for this first line here, the first credit card I plan on applying for next in 2024 may actually surprise you because it's still kind of a surprise to me even, but that is the City Business American Airlines credit card. And yes, I know it's a shock to all of us. I honestly don't know if I am going to apply for this card if I'm being completely honest, but it actually seems like one of the best options for me at the moment because I'm starting to fly a lot more with American Airlines specifically by transferring my points out from, you know, companies like Amex, for example, to British Airways, and then booking American Airlines flights through British Airways. That way I use a very limited amount of points, but I'm still able to book American Airlines flights with other point currencies besides just Built, since Built's the only company right now that actually has American as one of their transfer partners. I'm going to be making a full video about how I was able to book an American Airlines flight using British Airways Avios. I think actually it will be my next video at the time of recording this one. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in doing the same. But yeah, so that is a big reason as to why I want to apply for this card next. But further than that, I have a lot of big expenses coming up in basically the very beginning of March or the end of uh, February even. And I want to capture that spend with a new welcome offer if I can. I've already hit the Chase Inc. Unlimited welcome offer and the built card didn't have a welcome offer on it. So when I have like, you know, two or three thousand dollars worth of expenses coming up, that is out of the norm. One of those being like my car insurance, for example, for the next six months, like bigger purchases like that. I want to put that towards a welcome bonus if at all possible. And also, as we talked about earlier, I am currently sitting at 524 so I can't add any more Chase cards to my setup. And those would be the first business cards I looked at adding. But since I can't do that, and I don't exactly have an Amex business credit card I'm looking at, the business version of the American Airlines card with Citi could be a nice addition, especially because in the first year of having it, you don't have an annual fee on it. And I could lock in an elevated offer right now of 65,000 points. So it's gained a spot on my list in the first few months of 2024. But I also don't know if I'm going to get approved for it because I know that Citi in general is pretty increase sensitive. We'll see if I actually follow through with it. And obviously I'm going to document that on the channel. But if I do need to capture spend quickly, this would be the card that I tried to do that with. I think one of the most important columns here in this whole spreadsheet is going to be this 524 status after approval. And like I said before, sitting at 524 right now, but if I add this card to my setup, since it's a business credit card, and since it's a business credit card that is not from a company like Capital One that might report those cards to your personal credit report, my 524 status will stay exactly the same. And it's why business credit cards are so powerful for those of us that like to 
add as many cards as possible, really. Some of y'all might have seen this March 1st application date and said, wait, isn't that when the Wells Fargo Autograph Journey card comes out? And you would be right about that, but it actually is not really a card that I'm super strongly considering right now. And it kind of just depends on how it pans out. I don't think I'll be jumping on it very quickly because I don't want to increase my 524 count and all that. But I do have it at the bottom of my spreadsheet here grayed out because it's one that I'm kind of considering, but not exactly dying to have. Okay, so now we have card number one for the year, the city business card that I'm planning on applying for really within the next couple of weeks, depending on really just how I feel about the application and my guesses on if they'll approve me based on my inquiries lately. So we'll see about that. But then card number two is a card that I've had on my roadmap for a long time, and it actually goes hand in hand with the third card on here. So I'll reveal both at one time. And those are going to be both of the World of Hyatt credit cards. Now, I'm not actually planning on applying for both of these at the same time, like I did with the Inc. Unlimited and the Built MasterCard. But I do think that I will add one of these two credit cards whenever I drop back under 524 on technically May 1st of 2024, like we talked about up here. So my thought process here is, well, for one, I've always wanted the actual personal World of Hyatt credit card, and they just never raised the welcome offer on it. I think right now it has like an extra 5,000 points on it or something like that, but really just abysmal. And I don't think it's ever going to really get a super high offer. So if I'm sitting under 524 in May, and I, again, don't like want to pick up the autograph journey or something like that, or there's just no other cards on the market that I do want at the time, I could definitely see myself picking up one of these two credit cards. A big factor in helping me decide which one I want to go with is going to be one, depending on how much spend I have coming up. And two, if I want to add to my 524 account, if I was to apply for the Hyatt business credit card, my 524 status after approval is going to stay at 424 at that time. But if I apply, you know, for the personal one right after dropping under 524, I'll get pushed right back up to 524, which is not a big deal because I'm going to drop again in July of 2024. But if I'm really wanting to keep that number low and manage that as effectively as possible, I'll probably go with the business version. I just know that the business version for me is going to be a cancel in year two, most likely. I can't justify that annual fee when it has like basically no credits to help offset that. And I'm not running a ton of spin through that card. But for the welcome offer alone, I think it could be worth it. So still a little bit of a TBD on that one. And again, just depends on what bonuses are out there. If there are any new cards cards that I might want to add to my setup. All that could push these even further down my roadmap, but I do plan on adding the personal version at some point in my credit card journey, and this might be a decent time to do so. So after that, the next credit card on my roadmap is one I'm actually not going to be applying for fresh, but one I'll be product changing to, and that is going to be the Ritz Carlton credit card. I applied for the Marriott Boundless credit card on September 5th of 2023. So theoretically on September 5th of 2024, or you know maybe I wait a couple weeks after that or wait until um, October of 2024, I can product change it to the Ritz Carlton credit card and that is because I will have had the Marriott Boundless card open for a year and it has over a $10,000 credit limit on it. I really just want to do this for the channel, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't exactly need this card, but I think it would be cool to get that experience with it, especially if they do eventually discontinue this credit card. It'd be a cool kind of like a collectible item to have at some point, I guess. A very expensive collectible item, but obviously there are ways to completely offset that annual fee. And that's exactly what I plan on doing with it. Plus, it gives me a good excuse to use a, you know, high end free night certificate every year with Marriott. So I can't really complain about that. The 524 status after approval here is a little bit off because technically if I go for the you know personal World of Hyatt card, I'd be at 424 here, but technically shows me that if I went with the Hyatt business version, I'd be pretty far under 524, at least the furthest I've been in a long time. And I think that would help me a lot in applying for the next credit card on this roadmap, which is why I may try to go with a business credit card instead of the personal one in um, May. So what is that last credit card on my list, you ask? Well, that is actually going to be the City Premier card. Now I'm praying for one that the welcome offer is the elevator. 80,000 point offer at the time of me wanting to apply for this card. But I will say this time and time again, if there's one credit card on my list that is going to break my streak of getting approved for every credit card I've applied for in the last 12, the city premiere will be the one to do that. I mean, to be honest, I guess the city business card could also do that. So we might not even have a streak at this point. And I'll be a lot more likely to pull the trigger on it. But the city premiere card is one that's just infamously hard to get approved for, especially if you have, you know, really any applications within like the last six to 12 months. The reason I have it on my list now, though, is because I do think it's somewhat of a perfect storm here. Let's just say, for example, that I actually do go with like the Hyatt business credit card here. Again, another reason maybe to go for the business version instead of the personal, but that would mean that my last personal credit card application would have been the, I guess the built MasterCard that I just applied for in January. And then if I was to wait until, what is this? December 1st of 2024 to apply for the city premiere, that's almost a full 
12 months since I applied for a personal credit card. Granted, yes, I would have a couple of hard inquiries on my account for the City Business card and the Hyatt Business card, but nothing for the Ritz-Carlton card because it's just a product change. So overall, my credit profile would actually be looking, you know, pretty enticing for City. And I do have the City Custom Cash, so you would think that I actually would have a decent chance of getting approved for this card. And I guess the worst case scenario, theoretically, at least for like the uh, personal card application sake, is that if I did go with the personal World of Hyatt card in May, that would still be seven months that I hadn't applied for a personal credit card. And I think my odds would be pretty good at getting approved for the City Premier. Now, again, I don't know about that. The City Premier is one that's hard to get approved for, but I've had the City Custom Cash for such a long time now, and I would really like to be able to actually utilize those points with transfer partners. So while I wouldn't actually probably put a ton of spend on the City Premier at all, it would just be a great way for me to actually utilize my City thank you points. So that's the initial plan right now. The only other card on this list right here is another one that I've had on my roadmap for a long time, but they just can't seem to get me to want to apply for the card. And that is going to be the Hilton business credit card. You don't know that I've been talking about this card for a long time. And at this point, we can tell that they're starting to make a lot of changes to this card, at least, you know, like through Amex's website and stuff. But considering they just recently updated all of their personal Hilton credit cards and changed the designs and all of that, raise the annual fees, you know, what I'm talking about, I would expect them to do the same thing with the Hilton business at some point, which they haven't done yet. And I I'm assuming once they do that, they'll also raise the welcome offer on it to higher than 130,000 points. And if they do that, say in this like May time frame, I will likely get rid of both of these Hyatt credit cards from my roadmap and slot in the Hilton business instead. That would help me to manage my hard inquiries as well as my 524 status because the Hilton business should not give me a hard inquiry at all since it's an Amex credit card and I already have Amex credit cards in my portfolio and it's a business credit card. So wouldn't add to my 524 account, making that city premier application look a lot more enticing. So now that we know what cards I plan on applying for, throughout the rest of 2024, I can come to my expected welcome bonus reward totals for 2024 and fill these in. That way, again, I get a good idea of where my spend is going to be going and how much I can expect to reasonably get back in point and cash form over the course of this year. So these two credit cards right here, Chasing Unlimited and Built MasterCard are complete. So these are going to actually be reflected already in my total uh, balances for the year. And then I have the other credit cards that I just discussed applying for right here. I have not included the Hilton Business and Wells Fargo Autograph Journey in these totals or return on spend calculations because again I don't know if I'm going to be applying for those but if we do take a look at these totals and return on spend here you can see that I have these numbers actually calculating based on me not applying for the Hyatt business credit card with the personal version so these numbers are a little bit off depending on which card I go with but same idea applies here this would mean that again without the Hilton business and Wells Fargo autograph journey and the Hyatt business credit card I would need to spend seventeen thousand dollars towards these welcome offers in this year which is very justifiable for me I spend that much every year no problem responsibly of course but obviously these these days, it's not that hard to spend that much money. And then I should mention this too. Each one of these uh, cells over here is calculated based on my personal value of each of these types of points. So for Chase Ultimate Rewards, for example, the cashback rate is going to be one cent per point, meaning that I take this total amount of points that I earned from the bonus and divide it by 100 to get the cashback rate. You take that same number here and multiply it by 1.5 to give us our travel portal value because I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve that gives me a 50% boost in the portal, hence why I have that multiple. Transfer partners, I'm estimating at two cents per point. So I multiply by two down here to give me that value. Now I did that for all of these here. These NAs are going to be because, well, for one, the built MasterCard had no bonus, but for the city and world of Hyatt credit cards, since they are, you know, co-branded credit cards that only earn in that specific airline or hotel ecosystem, I went ahead and considered those to be transfer partner values instead of cash back and travel portal values, because you can't just straight up redeem, you know, American Airlines miles for cash back or through a travel portal. I guess technically you maybe could do that. I'm not as familiar with their currencies, but I only ever plan on using using it directly with those airlines or hotels. So I went ahead and multiplied each one of these transfer partner values by the points guys valuation of each of these uh, types of points. And that's roughly accurate. There may be a little bit of a misstep in here, but by the end of the year, I come in and finalize these numbers and you know make it look all pretty. But in doing all of that, like I said, I can see that I need to spend $17,000, but I can get these valuations for my points depending on which ways I redeem. And based on the return on spend here, you can see that obviously the transfer partner value of all of these points is going to be the best way for you to use them and give you the highest return on spend for all these welcome offers. But to get a basically 30% return on spend for this much of my spend, $17,000 worth in 2024, it's a very good number to be aiming for. And that's not to mention all the points I earn from other spending or referrals or what have you. But this just helps me to paint the picture of how valuable my welcome bonuses are going to be 
in this year. Okay, so we just covered a lot of stuff here very quickly, and I could probably make about 10 more videos off of this one alone. But what do you think about this roadmap? Are there any cards that you think I should be adding to it that I may be overlooking? Because obviously, y'all know a ton about this space too, and I'd like to hear y'all's input on this. And with that being said, of course, this is all going to probably change over time. I might make a couple more roadmap videos by the end of this year, depending on what cards come out, what welcome bonuses are elevated, and all of that. But hey, more content is better for all of us, right? If you do like these spreadsheet style of videos, then I'm going to direct you to this video next, where I break down my total points earned in 2023 from all of my credit cards and how much cash value those are all worth. And as always, Odin and I both want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel and we'll catch you guys next time.